G'day, Jake here from Yeti Tool Australasia here at Beyond Tools in Malaga, Perth. We're going to run through the Yeti Smart Bench full format CNC. What makes this machine quite unique is that we have a relatively small form factor machine, but we can actually process a full sheet of material. So we have a cutting area of 1250 by 2500, and we have an adjustable upper X axis that can fit 150 mil worth of material in the machine. So what makes this machine quite unique is that we have quite a narrow bench and if you come down here, you'll see that we have our lower X beam that runs along the bench here, supports our spoil board and essentially what happens is we adjust our upper X down onto our material and we effectively sandwich the two together. So what makes this important for a machine that's made from aluminium is we are bringing the support of the spindle as low to the material as possible. Whereas we have a typical CNC like we see in the background here with a floating gantry. The further away we get from the support of the machine, the less concentric the tool is. So with this method here, we have the support of the spindle all the way to the material and we're only about that far away from the support of the material. So we've got some great safety features on the machine as well. We've got some collision stop bars on the side here. So if we accidentally hit this, if we happen to leave something on the bench, the machine will pause, it will flash red, and on our console here, we'll get the ability to either stop the job if something bad has happened, or we can simply resume if it was a mistake. The LED lights on the machine are quite good because we get a quick overview of the status of the machine. Green is good, amber is waiting, and red is bad. So, the essential principles are the same as any CNC. We do have a relatively closed off Z head, but the good thing is we have an independent con console controller on the machine, which gives us the ability to control, load jobs, set datums, and it means we don't have to be tethered to a PC to be actually controlling the machine. So once we have our file, we can load it onto the machine and then we just use the console here to control. So with our relatively closed off Z head, it means we don't have much visual aid for the tool. So we have another neat little feature on the machine is this little laser crosshair. So essentially when we set up the machine for the first time, we set an offset and we use this to set our X, Y, zero origin. So if I wanted to set the origin to the corner of this material, I'd move the machine near. I can jog the machine to 10 mil, to one mil, so I can get it nice and close. And then on the machine, when I hit set, we have the option to use the laser crosshair. So when I tap yes on here, it then moves the tool bit to that crosshair location. We also, in the machine, have a little touch probe for setting the tool height to the Z. And we keep it as relatively simple as possible with the interaction of a touch screen and control of the unit there. Do you want to run something? We'll run something. <laughs> so, once we have a file, we can transfer it over a Wi Fi network if you connect the machine to a Wi Fi network. The good thing about the Wi-Fi network as well is that we can get software updates to the machine. There are software updates constantly coming out from the machine. Even if you do have an older machine, even the first generation of these machines still get the latest software updates. So having the machine connected to the Wi-Fi network means that every time you turn on the machine, it will automatically check for updates and will prompt you to update the machine. Once we have our file loaded, either by a Wi-Fi transfer or we can simply connect USB stick into the side of the console here. We can load it from the console. We can choose the various files that have already been saved to the console. Whenever we transfer something to the console, it stays on there. So if we want to run a job again, we can simply select it from the console here. I'll select one of these. You'll see the name preview and we hit the tick. It'll load it to the job cache. And then we also have the ability to check the job for any errors so what that will do is it will check the g-code file make sure that there's nothing weird happening in it and make sure the spindle's turning on make sure the rpm is adequate make sure that the feed speed of the machine is suitable 
um, and it'll make sure that it'll fit in the actual cutting area of the machine, depending on where you set the start point. Press play and you can see it start cutting. You'll probably have to pause because it's going to take 